I've had a lot of people commenting on my Notebook LM overview video saying that they don't trust Google with their information. They're right to be concerned because there is a way that Google can access their information. But there's a key difference between privacy and confidentiality. There is one thing you must be aware of in the Notebook LM privacy policy to ensure that your information is not being used. Hello, my name is Callum, also known as Wanderlutes, and welcome to today's video on Notebook LM how to control your information and the difference between privacy and confidentiality. Notebook LM by Google is very upfront that they do not use your information for training their AI model. But just because they're not using your information for training their model doesn't mean that the information is being kept confidential. By understanding the difference between privacy and confidentiality as it relates to AI model training, you can make an informed decision on how you want to use this software. In the privacy policy, there's one thing that Google notes you must do, or in this case, not do, in order to keep your information from being seen by other people. In either case, it's not using your information for training their model, but in some situations, that might not be good enough. You might need to retain confidentiality, and that's something that's worth looking into. Now, while I am an intellectual property lawyer and a patent agent, I want to state very clearly that this is not legal advice. This is just my understanding of how this privacy policy works. And based on all of the comments that I was getting from so many people on my last video, I wanted to explain my understanding to hopefully help you understand the difference between privacy and confidentiality so that you can make an informed decision on how you want to use this tool. At the end of the day, it's up to you to read the privacy policy yourself and decide whether or not you're comfortable with uploading your information. If you're dealing with confidential information or are extra concerned about how Google might be using it, I suggest consulting with a lawyer so that they can tell you specifically in your situation what you should be worried most about. Let's take a look at privacy versus confidentiality and how these terms relate to training an AI model. Privacy is about your right to choose to decide what happens to your information. In contrast, confidentiality is about a duty to protect information once it's been shared to keep information secret from others. For example, if someone gives me information and they tell me that it's confidential and I agree to maintain that confidentiality, I now have a duty to protect that information and prevent other people from seeing it unless they've also agreed to the terms of confidentiality set by the original person. In contrast, privacy is about my own information and whether I choose to give that information up whether it's for model training or to have someone else see it. Also, I want to quickly note that these are not legal definitions and the definition of privacy versus confidentiality for legal purposes is going to vary from country to country. So I recommend checking it out in your own jurisdiction. To give an example of what I mean by privacy versus confidentiality, let's take a look at the Notebook LM homepage. If we go to the overview section and scroll down, you can see that Google says, we value your privacy and do not use your personal data to train Notebook LM. Notebook LM does not use your personal data, including your source uploads, queries, and the responses from the model for training. So if you use Notebook LM, effectively what you're agreeing to is this definition of privacy, that they're not using your personal data, including these specific examples of source uploads, queries, and the responses from the model for training their AI model. But that doesn't mean that the information remains confidential in any way because it's possible for someone else to see the information you upload as a source or in the chat. And I'll explain that a little bit more when we get into the privacy policy and how you can avoid having that information viewed by other people. To help establish a difference between privacy and confidentiality, you can see at the top here, there's a business section. So let's take a look at Notebook LM for business. And again, if we scroll down, you can see that there's slightly different wording here. We value your privacy and never use your organization's data to train Notebook LM. But as a Notebook LM business user, your data will stay private to you and whoever you share the notebook with. So compared to the normal Notebook LM, that's a different bar. To me, this sounds like a higher bar and potentially gets to confidentiality because it says that the data will stay private to you and whoever you share your notebook with. That means that Google is effectively saying that no one else will see the information you're sharing. Again, in contrast, the normal Notebook LM just says that they're not using your data for training. It doesn't say anything about preventing other people from seeing it. To understand this difference a little more, it's time to take a look at the privacy policy. And I want to say that I only have access to the privacy policy from the normal Notebook LM. I don't have access to the business privacy policy. So my guess is that whatever I'm talking about here, there's a higher bar of confidentiality in the business program, because if there wasn't, what would be the point of using this as a business tier? 
But if you look at their privacy policy, it says that if you choose to provide feedback, then human reviewers may review your queries, uploads, and the model responses. So this is not using your data to train the AI, but it is possible that a human reviewer could see the information you're putting in there if you choose to provide feedback. So that's where you can see this little thumbs up or thumbs down. Anywhere you see a feedback option here, if you don't want Notebook LM or the human reviewers at Google to see what you're putting in there, just don't click on the feedback buttons. And Google mentions that it, keep in mind, it's best to avoid submitting any information you wouldn't feel comfortable sharing. So it's up to you how you wanna use this. But if you're a workspace or workspace for education user, no one will ever look at this. So it's up to you, the level of confidentiality you wanna deal with here. Now that you have a better idea on the difference between privacy and confidentiality and what's actually happening behind the scenes with Notebook LM, and how you can prevent your information in the normal Notebook LM from being viewed by human reviewers by avoiding providing feedback, I think it's a good time to ask the question, does it matter if people see your information? I had a lot of people commenting saying that who cares if they're using your data for training their AI model or not? It's for the benefit of humanity to allow them to train their models using everything from the internet. Depending on the notes you're taking and uploading, they might be highly confidential. Could be for client work, legal work, business planning, market strategies. For example, as a lawyer, if the notes I'm taking are related to client work, it would be unethical and potentially illegal for me to use software that takes that confidential information and uses it for AI model training. So that's a very clear example of where it matters very much what is being done with the information that I'm uploading to these services. As another example, if I'm doing highly sensitive cutting edge research, I could potentially be removing my ability to hold on to the intellectual property. If I'm giving it up to the AI model for training, once the model's updated and it becomes available to more people, someone could ask questions that causes the AI to give away my research even though it's not ready for publication yet. This might stop me from being able to protect my own intellectual property and prevent me from getting a patent. As another example, as a creator, the internet has shifted to a mentality of expecting everything for free, which has devalued a lot of creative and knowledge work. Assuming that everyone should be able to take everything for free provides what's called a chilling effect on original creativity because people are no longer incentivized to create new things if they can't monetize it or if someone else is monetizing their own work. Now, that said, of course, the internet is obviously a treasure trove of collective intelligence of humanity, and large language models like Gemini or GPT-40 are enabling us to access this information to an entirely new level, which requires some element of openness of information. So in my opinion, there needs to be a balance where, for example, creators and knowledge workers can opt in to having their work used for training or not. The choice shouldn't be made for each person automatically. To help provide some guidelines, I thought that I would now share how I feel comfortable using Notebook LM, showing you when I would or wouldn't be comfortable uploading information as sources to Notebook LM. Regarding my own work, I'm happy to upload YouTube videos, newsletters, and my own sources that are already published because this information has already been made available to the public, the fact that a human reviewer might see it doesn't bother me. I'm also comfortable on uploading Obsidian notes and ideas that relate to content I'm planning on making public in the near future. This is what I show a lot of in my other videos on Notebook LM. However, I would not be comfortable uploading anything related to patentable ideas or my long-term plans or secrets because again, it's possible that a human reviewer at Google sees this information and decides to do something with my idea. Again, Google says that if you choose to provide feedback, that's what allows a human reviewer to review your queries, uploads, and the model responses. But they also mention, keep in mind that it's best to avoid submitting anything you wouldn't feel comfortable sharing. So I think that's a good bar for me to have. If it's something that I wouldn't be comfortable sharing, it's probably not a good idea to upload. For example, if you accidentally clicked the thumbs up or thumbs down, you might now have immediately given access to a human reviewer to see the content that you're uploading. You could of course be very careful with how you're clicking around the screen, but if there's a chance that it would have some very drastic negative consequence, it's probably not worth uploading. In terms of doing work for other people, for confidential client work, I would likely sign up for Google Workspace or the business tier to ensure that no one is able to look at my information that I'm uploading. This just provides a higher level of comfort that I know that no one's gonna be seeing the information that might be confidential, which could have negative legal consequences for me. As another example, when dealing with intellectual property, it's possible to lose patent or trade secret rights by uploading information to something like ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot. In order to get a patent in many places around the world, the idea can't have been disclosed to the public. 
As an example here, OpenAI provides in its terms of use that a user's input may be reviewed or used by OpenAI to help develop and improve their services. It's possible that that type of sharing of information could be considered public disclosure, which could result in you no longer being able to get a patent, and it might also result in you destroying a trade secret. That phrasing for the OpenAI terms of use reminds me of the Notebook LM terms of use, where it says that it may be used to troubleshoot, address abuse, or make improvements. So it's possible that a court would determine that this counts as public disclosure and could stop you from getting a patent for your idea. So if it's anything related to intellectual property that you think you might wanna be applying for specific protection, like a patent, I absolutely would not be uploading information to Notebook LM. But whether or not you could do that for the Notebook LM for business or at Google Workspace would depend on the specific terms and services of those separate elements of Notebook LM. Related to this, if it's any legal work or medical work and it's related to specific clients, I would not be uploading that information because that would be potentially breaching my confidential duty to my client. But if I was doing general legal or medical research and I was asking Notebook LM questions based on publicly available information, I would be completely fine with using that as long as it's not getting into anything related to the specific client details. Now, that said, to increase the security of my use of Notebook LM, I do not provide any feedback. That's the one thing I have to do in order to prevent human reviewers from viewing my queries, uploads, and model responses. And that said, I just wanna remind you that these terms of use and the privacy policy can change over time as Google introduces new features. So it's always worth checking how the privacy policy may have changed whenever the terms of service pop up because Notebook LM has updated. I hope that gives you an overview on the distinction between privacy and confidentiality and how you can use Notebook LM and specifically avoid things like providing feedback to keep your information from being viewed by others. And remember, Google themselves noted that if there is something highly sensitive, they recommend not uploading it. What that means, I'm not entirely sure but it's worth considering and making sure that you're being very careful and intentional with how you're uploading information. If the work you're dealing with is extra sensitive, then I suggest taking a look at the Google Notebook LM for business tier, or perhaps the Google Workspace or Workspace for educators, as Google distinguished them inside the privacy policy. In general, if you're working with confidential information, I would be very careful about the AI tools you're using, and I highly recommend reading the privacy policy and the terms of service. If you're interested in learning more about Notebook LM and how you can use it in a ton of different scenarios, I have a Notebook LM overview video that goes in depth on all of the major features and how I've been finding it helpful. Google themselves actually commented on it and said that they thought it was a great walkthrough. So that was pretty cool. In that video, I also connect to Obsidian, my personal knowledge management system, or my second brain, as a way for me to augment my existing knowledge using artificial intelligence like Notebook LM without worrying about my information being used to train the AI model. I also do a deep dive on the Notebook LM AI podcast feature. So if you're interested in seeing how you could perhaps start transitioning to an audio focused workflow, I recommend checking out that video. If you found this video helpful, I would love if you would please consider subscribing and sharing it with a friend. Word of mouth is by far the best way for me to grow my channel and I'm making YouTube my full-time career so any support is much appreciated. I also have a low cost membership where people can support me each month so that I can continue to afford making these videos so that you can keep learning along with me. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.